Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me on this session. My name is Titus Kurek. I'm a product manager at Canonical. And today I'm going to talk about MicroStack. So MicroStack is an open stack on Rails solution that allows you to install MicroStack very quickly in the most straightforward available way. Uh, this session is going to be followed by a quick demo during which I will demonstrate how to install and use MicroStack on my workstation. And uh, hopefully there will be time for some questions and answers. So once we we'll wrap up the session, we'll open the panel for questions. Uh, so at the beginning, uh, I'm going to talk about two phases of OpenStack. So the first phase of my OpenStack is that OpenStack is awesome. And we all know that like we are here because we believe that OpenStack is awesome. Um, it's combined market size worldwide with around a billion of dollars, which is very impressive. It's, it's much higher compared to the market share of the containers market. Um, OpenStack is one of the three biggest open source projects and only three open source projects achieve this number of involvement from various companies, for, from various organizations, from various developers. And this is OpenStack, Linux kernel, and Chromium. What we observe as, as, as canonical and, and uh, based on the data that are provided by various independent uh, uh, research institutions is that its adoption is constantly growing. If you have a look on the chart below, uh, various proprietary solutions for private cloud implementation, their adoption is declining while the adoption of OpenStack continues to grow, which is great. And, and finally, it is very major project. Uh, project. Um, this year, OpenStack has been celebrating its uh, 10 years anniversary. It's been available for 10 years. It's uh, it, it, it being supported by various companies and, and independent organizations. It achieved the level when it is really mature. And um, its directions moving forward are going to focus on even more providing even more stability. So OpenStack is awesome and we all know about that. But unfortunately, OpenStack has a second phase. And this is that it is complex and huge. It is a giant beast. Um, if you have a look at the number of services that are currently available there for OpenStack, there are 32 services plus a number of supporting tools Obviously, you don't need all of them, right? But uh, if you're about to run OpenStack in a data center, in a production environment, you, you're still probably going to uh, struggle with at least 10 of those primary services, right? Um, now, each of those services using a number of configuration files, each configuration file consists of a number of parameters. So how are you going to absorb all of that knowledge? Will you be able to configure OpenStack to your desired ultimate state manually? Uh, of course, no. And um, it, it is a known fact that OpenStack deployments used to be painful. And thus, there are various commercial OpenStack distributions available around, which help you to at least um, um, abstract this complexity during the deployment phase so that you don't have to bother about all of the services, all of the processes running, all of the configuration files, every single line in a configuration file. Um, but this is just one portion of the problem. The other problem is that OpenStack operations used to be even more painful. The successful deployment of a cloud is usually just the beginning of the journey. The entire cloud has to be operated effectively post-deployment. So OpenStack operations used to be even more painful. And finally, back to this point that it, it, it is a huge beast, a typical production deployment uh, consists of at least 12 nodes. So um, if you're about to set up a lab environment 
where you just want to experiment with OpenStack, or if you're looking for um, OpenStack as a solution for your edge, is OpenStack really an answer for you? Because with all of these overheads, um, it may turn out that, that you actually won't be able to successfully use it um, either on your workstation or in your development environment or on your edge. So this is the second phase of OpenStack. But what if you don't need all of this complexity? What if you just need OpenStack? What if you need basic OpenStack services? You don't need all of those um, container, uh, per metal, uh, shared file system services. Just the basic goodness of OpenStack, which is typically Keystone, Glance, Nova, Neutron, and Cinder. What if you don't really care about various extensions, about various configuration options in its configuration files? What if you can just go with the default one? And finally, what if you don't need this cluster consisting of 12 nodes? And all you need is just a lightweight OpenStack on Rails solution. Well, if you're looking for something like that, then I hope I have an answer for you. So at the end of the day, we may ask ourselves the question, why not just a single package? Why shouldn't we package all of OpenStack components together with all of their dependencies so that you would be able to install it in a single command and just start using it without struggling with all of this complexity behind its deployment and post-deployment operation. So if you're looking for a solution like that, then I hope I have an answer for you. And this answer is MicroStack. So MicroStack is an open stack in a snap, which means that all of its services with all of their dependencies are packaged together in a single archive that can be just installed by running a snub install command. There's another command to initiate it after the installation, but this is all you need. There are just two commands to set up an OpenStack cloud. If I'm going to present all of that during my demo part of this presentation, but if you would be looking to um, try OpenStack on your workstation, then I would encourage you to visit the following website, microstack.run or ubuntu.com slash openstack slash install, where you will find detailed information about how to install MicroStack in just these two steps. So let's now have a look at what's behind MicroStack, what's behind this OpenStack on Rails solution. So there are just basic services that are available in MicroStack, but as mentioned before, they give you all of the goodness, all of the traditional goodness of OpenStack that you usually need to start your journey. You'll find Keystone there, you'll find the Horizon dashboard, Plans for images, Nova for compute, Cinder for storage, Neutron for networking. Neutron comes with OVN by default, OVN is uh, an open source SVN uh, platform that runs on the top of OVS. And what's also worth calling out is that clustering is also available in MicroStack. So you can have, uh, if, if you're looking for a solution where you would be running more than one uh, hardware, like one server, then uh, you can cluster MicroStack so that you could, you would be able to use multiple servers at the same time. With regards to minimal requirements, it's a multi-core processor and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So if you're running a, a typical or typical developer laptop, you should be able to install it on your workstation. So as stated before, MicroStack is an open stack for testing and development. You can get it up and running on your workstation. But it's also open stack for the edge. So if you have a look at 
what the trends are with the edge computing nowadays is that um, obviously the data center is going to remain as the key technology powering the infrastructure of organizations. And um, we see OpenStack being deployed in the data center. This can be any type of an OpenStack. This can be Charmed OpenStack, it can be uh, Airship, it can be Ansible powered OpenStack. And then on the edge, we see a bunch of satellite clouds, micro clouds, which typically run either on a single server or just a very small number of the servers, like kind of a mini rack with three or five servers. And for this kind of a micro cloud approach, micro stack is the most straightforward way to go. But what if you're looking for an open stack for the data center, that micro stack is there as well. So the quick answer is, Yes, of course, you can use MicroStack in a data center as well. Um, like it uh, provides clustering. So as stated before, you can get it up and running across a number of bare metal machines. But one thing you have to remember is that it's an OpenStack on Rails solution, right? It is a snap-based install. That's the most straightforward way to get OpenStack up and running. It's very lightweight, but it's also opinionated. What does it mean? It means that it's not really configurable. So you only get those basic services and they come with the uh, default values in the configuration file. So if you're looking for a more decent solution for the data center, for an open stack in the data center, then my recommendation would be to have a look at Charmed OpenStack, which is another distribution for OpenStack addressing all of its complexity but in a different manner, providing a model-driven deploy, uh, model-driven approach towards its deployment and operations. It's charm-based, it's composable, configurable, provides lifecycle management capabilities, and it works at any scale. So when you go with your journey with MicroStack, it's uh, about making a decision that at some point you need a more powerful solution. So if that's the case, then you can switch to using Charmed OpenStack. But let's get back to MicroStack and also analyze the differences between, between MicroStack and uh, solutions like DevStack or PackStack that also provide this kind of an OpenStack on Rails solution. So if you have a look at the differences listed here, um, the main benefit of MicroStack is that all services are available in a single package, which is not the case with either DevStack or PackStack. It is a zero ops open stack because snaps receive automatic updates. There is a commercial support available from Canonical for MicroStack, while DevStack and PackStack are just a kind of a development and testing solutions. It provides the most straightforward deployment with a single command to install it and just now recommend to initiate it, which is again, not the case with DevStack or PackStack. And obviously the, the uh, disadvantage of MicroStack compared to DevStack or PackStack is that it's not configurable. So again, it's an opinionated snap-based OpenStack on Rails solution coming with basic set of services and default values in the configuration file. And now I'm going to move to the demo part of this uh, presentation. So I'm going to switch to my terminal window um, where I have MicroStack already installed because uh, all of this process takes up to 20 minutes. So uh, I, I ran this command before. Um, we start with uh, MicroStack installation using some flags. Um, then it's just a matter of how quickly uh, can it be downloaded on your local network. Um, and then you run the MicroStack init command that takes care of the initial service configuration. And while it's complete, we can start interacting with MicroStack uh, using the uh, standard OpenStack 
client. So I can run something like OpenStack catalog list to display um, all of the services that are running here and start interacting with all of those APIs. I can, I can also go to the uh, web GUI It takes a while. One thing you have to remember is that it's still fully functional um, OpenStack, um, and I'm just running uh, Dell and Spiron with limited resources. So um, it, it takes some time. But here we go. It's coming. Um, I'm going to use the default uh, username and password that's uh, set during the MicroStack installation. And I get the regular OpenStack dashboard. It's 100% it's, uh, upstream, so th there's no customization here. Yeah. It's, it's just like a typical OpenStack that it gets up and running when you install the vanilla one. Um, and now we can start navigating. We can check uh, images. So there is a serious image downloaded by default. Um, and now what I'm going to do in the next step is to instantiate uh, a test instance on my MicroStack cloud. So obviously I can use, oh, sorry. Obviously I can use uh, typical, um, OpenStack client commands as well as uh, server create, but there's there's just a shorter command available with MicroStack that uh, you can use to spin up your test instance. Uh, we can move to the instances in the GUI to see whether it's coming. It is not coming yet, but uh, as I stated, it takes some time, so uh, we're about to wait. Try to refresh. Here we go. It's building. Uh, so it's going to be available in a second. Now it's active. And the server test to launch, the status is built. Um, the instance has been successfully built, uh, and we can install it. Uh, sorry, we can access it with, by using a command that's provided here. Um, so we're now inside of the instance on MicroStack. Uh, we can run some basic commands. For example, let's check the uptime. Uh, and uh, that's basically it. So again, uh, what we get as a result is uh, a single node open stack running on my workstation. It's 100% uh, upstream uh, and it can be clustered. So if I would be running, uh, if I was about to run open stack across a number of uh, physical nodes, this is also available and you can refer to those installation instructions that I provided um, at the beginning of this presentation to get MicroStack up and running in a cluster mode. So that's basically it as for the demo and as for this presentation. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would encourage you to give MicroStack a shot. It's really just 20 minutes to get it up and running on your um, workstation. One thing to that's worth calling out is that uh, if if you install it and uh, you just want to remove it because it's consuming uh, some resources on your site, there's only a um, single command to again uninstall it from your workstation. So that's all with regards to the presentation and the demo that uh, 
I will be glad to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much.